So this morning I'm out at Twin Oaks Conservation Area. I'm gonna fish the, the little cove that's out here. It's uh, south of here is the canal that runs between the two Lake Tohos. And it's gonna be an interesting day. One, we got a full moon. Two, if you can see these clouds. Now, we're not supposed to get any rain till this afternoon, but we do have obviously the, these, this frontal system moving through and it's already windy. And it's only like six o'clock right now. And uh, we've already got probably 10 mile an hour winds. It shouldn't get much windier than that. Uh, uh, checking, checking the weather channel. They say that's about as, as windy as it's gonna get. Uh, rain should hold off. Obviously the danger of going out here in Florida during the summer is, you know, these thunderstorms can pop up at any time. We should be okay though. Um, the air is actually kind of dry right now, so I'm not too worried about that till this afternoon. But the bite might be, be a little bit difficult. But one of the reasons I like fishing West Lake Toho so much and why the FLW Tour and the Bassmasters host their events here is because the, your ability to catch a big fish here at any given day is just, re it's really high. Now this is a big lake and it's pressured really hard and the fish are just scattered throughout the lake because there's hydrilla beds everywhere. Um, and I, while places like Keenansville Lake, Blue Cypress Preserve, Blue Cypress Lake, Stick Marsh 13, and the Failsmere Great uh, Water Management Area really interest me and you can catch big fish there. Uh, it's a, they're a little bit harder to fish for some people just because of the amount of uh, vegetation and stuff there and how shallow the lakes are. You can't get boats out into certain places and you got to use uh, smaller boats or kayaks and stuff like that. But what I like about this lake is that if you look at the trophy catch report system almost over 300 fish eight pounds or larger have been reported through that system plus you can imagine how many haven't been reported so i want to get out there give this a shot down here and, and see if we can't catch anything on this kind of windy pre-stormy day and see what happens so this is the kayak launch here now there's going to be wind on the camera today i'm going to do my best to talk over it there's nothing I can really do about it. It's just after six o'clock. The water is normally almost up to the sign, but we're at the end of our dry season, entering rainy season. Last time I was here, these posts were out of the water, like completely. So this makes me feel good about fishing this. Um, this whole area is a cove here. The canal is down there where if you take any of the uh, airboat rides, They'll come out through there. I kind of want to fish the other side, and up and around, and then come back this way. And with the wind blowing this way, it's going to be okay. I should know exactly where the wind's blowing at all times. It shouldn't mix up too much. Most of the front is coming this way. So let's get out there. I have top water on. I don't think they're going to hit top water today, but you never know. Um, I'm probably going to switch that out. But I am going to use the little Kitex swim bait on the underspin because this little bait right here has. This little rig up actually has caught me the most fish out here and i don't know if it's because people out here regular fishermen have the fish spoiled by using shiners all the time but i do know the main forage for the fish out here is obviously bait fish so we're going to give that a go fish the edges and stuff uh the hydrilla that's out here with the senko and hopefully we'll catch some 20 inch plus monsters but you never know what's going to happen when the fishing's on out here it's excellent when it's off, it sucks. No, man. On a Senko. That's a good fish. Where is he? A 20 incher, but I'll take it. Hold on, we can get caught in there. Perfect hook set corner at the mouth. Beautiful fish, big head, obviously, typical Florida fish. Oh, just about 17 and a half. Let's get him back in there. Not quite big enough, boy. Let's 
the wind has died down significantly now since that early morning burn off it's kind of gone um, it's not as bad anymore I don't expect the wind to get much worse than what it was according to the weather channel and if the weather channel gets anything right for Florida they at least get the wind right I mean Florida's kind of an unpredictable state we got a lot of water we've got stuff coming out of the Gulf meeting stuff from the Atlantic all the time so weather patterns change within hours last night it said we had scattered thunderstorms probably this morning starting at uh, about 8 a.m. and now it's pushed back to about 12 a.m. this after or 12 p.m. this afternoon so you just have to just to really pay attention here I don't know what that was. Yeah, something was swimming with the bait. Line stayed tight and it kept moving sideways. I'm like, what is, what's going on? Could have been a gar. Could have been a blue eel. Winding in, he came up and grabbed it. I don't need tangled up in my rope. Oh, why you gotta do that? There we go. Another one on the worm. Little guy this time. So the fact that little dude chased this Senko as I was wanting it in, it's kind of a good sign. These fish are going to be feeding and we're going to have partly cloudy skies this morning. A little bit of haze, a little bit of a breeze, prefrontal, prefrontal conditions maybe, I, you want to say it that way. so I'm not, not sweating that too much. I do like the fish are biting. Comes on now. I think that's two fish off this little area here. Still no giant. fish don't want to leave this corner just yet the grass kind of ends here <clears throat> and then we have this gap nothing but lily pads and a little bit of uh, some lower hydrill and then some other grass mixed in with it here you know, all those fish came off these little this lily pad grouping over here so I kind of want to see if I can get some topwater frog going I don't think that whopper plopper is gonna work here I didn't get on camera, but this little guy came up and smoked the frog. Whoop, 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 hang on. Let's get you off. I'm catching fish, so I'm not going to complain. I'm just not catching quality ones. So I'm working my way down this edge, and a lot of times I'll ignore these edges um, if there's nothing but just, just the grass here. I mean, if you want to pitch back in, there's probably fish in there. I don't have the setup for that. 
but there's there's a little bit of grass here before the stuff that comes out of the water. Um, but if there's not a lot of hydrilla and stuff along these edges, I kind of skip them because not a lot of place for bait fish to hide. Someone's on no? Ah, he had it. Might have been a gar though, or a bluegill, possibly. I always hate gar. Bit that back end of the Senko off. with it. Ah, it's it pulled up, he started taking off with it. Not a big guy. It's another fish in the boat, so. I saw him miss it at the surface when I was winding it across, so I just stopped and let it drop, and man, he flew up and grabbed it. We are not winning the war on size here. He's swimming with it, I think. Yeah, it's the little guy. We saw one cheese bait fish over there. Ooh, you get a wound. Something took a bite out of him. Not huge, but I came on the frog. Again, we are not winning the war on size today. Pretty healthy little fish. Right, so let's get down here. There's a lot of hydrilla in this corner here. It's fresh hydrilla too, nice and green. I've seen a couple of fish bust over here, but I don't know what they were. I just saw them hit the surface. It's hydrilla there. Oh, that's a lot of hydrilla. That's why. Well, was not expecting that. Let's get him off the hook. It's like, why is that so tight? It shouldn't be that hard to pull this out of the hydrilla. Get out of there. Let's 
kind of rare that you hook a gar on a, no, on a single hook like this. He's off. He just happened to grab it just the right way. I didn't even know he was on. So the camera died right as I set the hook on this guy, and this guy slammed. A little underspin. Not gonna help me in the tournament, but that's still a nice fish. I mean, he smoked that underspin too. All he's doing is drifting at uh, about, I don't know, 50, 50 yards off the, uh, about 50 yards off the, uh, the weed line out there. And I thought I had a bite earlier. It's not like I had one on. Threw it back out there and this guy smoked it. All right, so we're back to the pier canoe kayak launch here at uh, Twin Oaks Preserve. Um, and uh, what started out as kind of like a gloomy, windy morning actually turned out into a pretty decent day of fishing. Now, I didn't have any luck going across this this shore. Everything happened on, on that side of the cove over there. But I caught quite a few fish. Now, nothing in size-wise is going to help me out in those monthly tournaments that I'm competing in. But I got a nice 17-incher and probably another one that's close to 15 back out there in the open. And uh, I caught quite a few fish. Yeah, had a couple bite, other bites that I missed, but you know what? It's uh, it was a pretty good day. So if you're out fishing, just be careful because uh, Florida weather is unpredictable. Right now, I've got a uh, pretty good view of the southern sky where the, any of the storms tonight are going to be coming from. It's still fairly breezy out, and it's probably going to get breezier uh, through the days the storms start to move in this afternoon. But fishing right now, it's been pretty good. I think if we would have stayed on the other side and fished some more of those isolated pockets or along that edge, probably catch some more fish. A lot of fish seem to be piled up out there. So that's going to do it for me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, tight lines.